What is up, Sonic XD here, and welcome, welcome everybody to my audio commentary of Alpha and Omega, the movie. So, basically, I am just gonna be sitting down here and watching the movie and talking about um, some funny and odd stuff that happened in the movie that are worth, you know, that are notable and worth talking about. And also some of my thought process as to why I did the jokes in the YouTube poop. And uh, also uh, some jokes that I thought about seven years ago when I watched the movie uh, initially when it came out. Because I, I already had some jokes and ideas of what I wanted to do with the movie seven years ago. Alright, then I guess um, we're gonna jump straight into the movie now. Woo! For those of you who stick around, my 10% subscribers, hey guys! Welcome to watching this movie. Alright, the movie's starting. So, in the beginning of this movie, um, something kind of funny kind of happens here. You see, um, this is their, this is the beginning of the movie, is like we're looking at young Humphrey and his young friends doing their shenanigans and stuff like that. However, because they're younger now, so how would you think they would be voice acted? Would they try to imitate them being younger, or would they try to get like another voice actor to voice acting them young? No, they just pitch shift them. So like, they are just slightly like, pitch shifted. And if you watch this like two or three times, you'd be like, huh, I noticed- Humphrey's voice now sounds like this! Instead of his regular voice, and I don't know, I think that's kind of funny. Okay! Now I'm going to talk about the the Mario Kart scene for this YouTube group. Because uh, this movie for some reason thinks it's like a holy grail for like they found they they found Jackpot with all these like log racing scenes as you can see here. And you know they keep doing this in the freaking movie four times by the way. And back then when I did the uh, when I looked at this I was like Mario Kart. I don't know why I just thought about this. This was a thing I thought about seven years ago and I still brought back the Mario Kart thing. And uh, yeah, in the end, I, I put it into the into the movie and into the YouTube poop, and that's that. And here we have the slow motion scene, which is really incredibly impossible. <laughs> oh, also, originally I wasn't gonna do the hum 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 k k k k k joke in the movie because I don't know the way they pronounced it wasn't that good. But in the end, I still wanted to do it because Humphrey having the name Hump inside was funny, I guess. Okay, now this scene is um. It's pretty funny. So we get we get Winston. Hi, this is this is the Kate's dad and stuff like that. So in this scene, we get to showcase how much of a horny bastard Humphrey is. How much he just wants to bang bang that sweet ass of Kate. <laughs> look at this. I'm gonna I'm gonna ignore Winston now. I'm gonna be looking at oh look at that sweet ass. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. look at that. look at that shit bounce. Boing boing boing. <laughs> This movie, for some reason, has a lot of weird... Uh, oh, oh, oh. Can't say the M word, guys. We can't say the M word. This is a kid's movie. The M word is off limits, guys. M no, no. M word? No, no, no. Reproduce? That's fine. The M word? Mate? How dare you? How dare you? <laughs> I feel like I'm going a little off track here. Yeah, this movie has a lot of unnecessary uh, adult jokes, in my opinion, that aren't even that funny. But, uh, you know, whatever. I might, I might do a calendar or stuff like that, but I don't really want to do too much editing because this is going to be a freaking 1 hour and 30 minute commentary of the whole entire movie. Okay, either way, uh, this we now start our movie, the Alpha and Omega. Uh, because this is the beginning of the movie, I might as well talk about my idea as to why I called it Alpha Male Humps Omega Waifu. So, short answer, okay, I want to um, talk about- oh wait, before I talk about that, I want you guys to look at this logo right here. Look at the O. As you can see, the A and the O are like wolves, right? Look at the O. The O is a totally different picture inside of that wolf. It's really weird. I don't even know why. So the reason why I call it Alpha Male Humps Omega Waifu is because, um, well, the Alpha Male sounds like something funny. Humps is because, you know, Humphrey. And Omega Waifu because, you know, Lily is waifu. <laughs> um... Mario Kart joke here was I basically just turned to 200cc, and that's it. So there's not much, not much, um, not much else to talk about. But yeah, they get better at it, so that's why I decided to turn to 200cc. So 
Also, what's kind of interesting is like uh, if if you really want to go in depth with my title called Alpha Male Hamso Omega Waifu, the alpha of the movie is supposed to be Kate. So if I call it Alpha Male and Omega Waifu, then that doesn't make sense because you know Humphrey is the Omega and Kate's the Alpha. So you can depict it as at least for me that Garth and Lily is the Alpha and Omega, and that's why even my logo is like dark orange, and oh. Omega and like uh, Kate and uh, Lily is white. That's that's one of the reasons why I did that. All right, we're done with the logo. Uh, nothing really interesting happens here until we get to the uh, the stampede scene. Okay, did I? I didn't. You know, so much. I've, I've been talking so much about the movie that I haven't really even started talking about. Uh, how I generally feel about this movie. So the general gist of this movie is that it's, it's very, uh, it's very mediocre. Okay. It's okay. Yeah, thanks, <laughs> thanks, Humphrey. It's okay. It's not like amazing. In fact, I don't even think it's above good. But like, um, it had some scenes. It has good stuff in the movie. I just don't think they push the good stuff enough for it to be, you know, a good movie. I just think it's mediocre, and I'll get, I'll tell you, I'll tell you guys what I think was really good about this movie later on. But you, you guys probably know what it is already, the Garth Dilly, whatever. But um, also, this movie has a lot of uh, adult jokes, unnecessary, not even that funny, in my opinion. And uh, but it does have a lot of you know YouTube poop material, and I think it's funny to you know enough YouTube poop material to still make because there's a lot of stuff in this movie that's like awkward and out of place in this movie, but is like. Um, you know, good. It's good enough still to be made as a YouTube event, to be made as memes and stuff like that. And also, hey, Stampede! Haha, -ha, that's our first Lion King reference. Let's see how many more can we get. Because there's gonna be a ton. Trust me on that. Uh, yeah, here we get to see Kate do very impressive gymnastic skills. And, uh, oh, I planned the shooting star scene here a long time ago, too. Not seven years ago, because the shooting star wasn't a meme back then. But I, I plan the shooting. I plan to doing a shooting star meme like that a long time ago. To me, the shooting star meme has became kind of cringy now. So that's why I did the shooting star meme for like two or three seconds, and it instantly into the B movie plane crashing explosion, which I think is kind of like really out of place. Also, Kate's such a nice person, saving the Eastern dogs, and you know no one's really thankful for that whole entire situation. But anyway, uh, I'm not gonna talk about the movie. Now I'm gonna talk about one of my favorite jokes of this scene, which is the humongous lady going against Tommy Wiseau getting stopped by the bully hunters. <laughs> I I think this that was really funny when I got all that combined into the package. I just think I just think it's it's really funny, that whole entire thing. Um Yeah that's all I can really think about that's really funny about this scene. Um Okay, you know what? I'm hungry. And if you guys don't mind, I'm gonna start eating my lunch. Which is a delicious cheeseburger that I just bought down the street by a place called Q Burger. You guys don't have that in America. It's only it's only exclusive in Taiwan. Ha! <laughs> and you guys have In and Out, so I'm a little jealous. But and Chipotle, but I have Q Burger. Ha! Um. Oh. Very funny. Oh my gosh, Humphrey. Oh. Humphrey's so not funny in this movie. <laughs> Okay, so, um, Omegas? excuse me, I'm eating my hamburger. I also have <laughs> something else here, which is my boba tea. Every time you guys watch popcorns, I, I'm sorry, you guys eat popcorns when you eat, when you watch movies. Um, I drink pearl tea. Oh, sorry, we call it pearl tea here, but I know you guys call it boba tea. Oh, ass shot, ass shot, look at that. Shot. I don't know. <laughs> I gotta stop sometimes. I feel really, really perverted. <laughs> okay, but this place that I got boba tea is called uh, Qingxing. I don't really know what's called in English. It's called Tea Lover. I don't really know. Tea Lover. But yeah, this place is really good. You see it all around in Taiwan. Um, people, some some people say it's kind of overrated, but in my opinion, I think it's very good. I think it's great. If you guys ever get a chance to come to Taiwan, try Qingxing. Try a lot of different types of boba tea, but this place, this place is good. Mm. Oh, you see. Nothing really funny happens here until later on. So, let me see. Did, did I miss anything that I wanted to say? No, I got a little notebook here. 
see how I can talk about some stuff, huh? Okay, I guess I guess nothing really interesting happens here, which means oh yeah, here's Eve, best one of the best characters in the movie. <laughs> but um, now I get to talk a little bit about some off-topic stuff. Yeah, all right, off-topic. So um, let's see, I'm gonna talk about work. So I believe a month ago I made an update video talking about how I've been working like eight or nine hours a day. So and it's kind of dull and stuff like that. Well, stuff happened recently that um now kind of makes work in my opinion quite productive in my opinion um currently i go to work and i've been and, and one day like some guy says okay i'm gonna give you after effects and cinema 4d and i want you to learn that so i've been doing a lot of after effect practice uh which is like as you can see the background that i'm using for this video by the way is uh you know is this was made by me in After Effects? I didn't. I didn't like. Uh, I didn't like find some royalty-free background to use. This this background is made by me in After Effects. In fact, I made like six of them. So I just changed one. Boom! Pow! Yeah! Check that! Check that background out! Oh! Look how look how badass it looks! <laughs> I really don't want to edit too much, so I, I shouldn't I shouldn't cue too many things like that. Um. Okay. So here's one of the things I really really liked about this movie, which is Eve's true. Whoever did this, let's rip his tail off and shove it down his throat. That line is so great! I love that line in this movie. Like, I can't believe they slipped that in. And it gets better and better and better. Eve is gonna drop five bombs in this movie. That was the first one. And I, I made a YouTube poop about every single one. I made, a, I made a joke about every single one of those jokes that happened in the YouTube poop. And I'm really, really glad they did that. And I absolutely love it. I absolutely love the way how they, how they made Eve like that as a character. <laughs> Also, here is um, a joke that is, he says it's a joke, I really don't think it's funny. So check it out, he, oh, not, 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 not this scene yet, it's the next scene, so they get pissed off by berries. But now they're like, oh no, we're joking, uh, how about have some squirrels for dinner? They were like, yeah, we're gonna have some squirrels! And they're like, ah ha ha, bad joke, this is a kid's movie, we can't show anybody dying or getting eaten, because that's too real. Ha ha ha. So this scene is basically... Winston talking with Tony. We're introduced to the character Tony here. Uh, again, nothing really happens here. I wanted to do something, but nothing really happens in my opinion, so so I can't really do much. Okay, let me finish the conversation about my uh, about, uh, the topic about my work, because I was talking about them. So yeah, I'm learning After Effects. I've been doing a lot of cool animations and tricks. And in fact, I, I uh, implemented <laughs> red eyes. I just saw that. And I implemented some of the techniques into this YouTube book too. Some of the, some of the effects. And the background, by the way, you can see that, which I will change later. I, I still want you guys to look at this background. And also, Cinema 4D. I've been learning 3D animation. I have no idea how good I'm gonna be with that, but I've been learning it. And uh, I actually did. I actually did uh, do a scene, which is which you'll see later on. I'll, I'll tell you guys when it, when it happens. It's. Um, but yeah, because I've been doing this recently. Even though yes. Working eight to nine hours is still very tiring and very sometimes can still very feel very dull But because of what I've been learning and what I've been doing and yeah, I still do like um, I don't know wipe the tables clean the clean the clear the drawers uh, do stickers or posters whatever, but Because I still get to do some video editing practices and you know 3d practices. I feel productive and That's the main thing at least at least I go to work feeling productive in fact, maybe even more productive than going to school. <laughs> but yeah, I don't really want to admit it, but yeah, I do feel productive. Even though it still feels kind of dull sometimes. Okay. Uh, either way, work. That's that's the work topic. Yay, we got we got some... You guys listen to me rant, rant, rant about work now. <laughs> okay, I'm going to get back to talking about the movie now. Because this whole part, I think there's a lot to talk about. So... I uh I don't know why I thought about the Becky Becky Bird joke here, but uh, I did, and that's why I did the you know Becky Got Stick. What? Let me smash thing. Oh, it's called Let Me Smash Meme. Okay, but yeah, I just thought about that there, and I did it. And th there's something kind of funny here that I want you guys to notice. So look at the expressions that uh, Humphrey's friends have. And Humphrey doesn't say anything weird here. Watch, they're gonna look disappointed. And they're not gonna look disappointed anymore. It's like, I feel like the original line was something else. Like, you guys suck. Okay, just kidding. Or something like that. I don't know, it's weird. And of course, we have our second Eve bomb gonna be dropped here. Oh my gosh, Kate, you look so beautiful because you put a 
Put a flower on your hair. If now, if Garth gets out of line, take those beautiful teeth of yours. Go for the throat and don't let go until the body stops shaking. Mwah! Oh, that is so good. Oh, yes. Oh, I love that. And it just gets better. Can you believe that? It just gets better. Oh, my goodness. It's just amazing. Either way, um, now we're going to start the Moonlight Howl. So now we're going to get to the Moonlight Howl scene, which is a bunch of wolves howling. And ooh, ooh, a little, a little tachi tachi there. Okay. And um, in my opinion, this movie does a pretty good job with the uh, the howling scenes. Like, not amazing, but good. You know, not doesn't come off as too forced or anything like that. I think it's, it's it's not bad. It's not bad. Also, one funny thing is I had to look up a ton, a ton of howling songs or whatever songs that contain ooh and stuff like that for uh, for this scene and other scenes. So I, I, so that's why you hear the arms theme song and the uh, what do you call it? Uh, moves like Jagger here because I thought it would fit. I'll keep, I'll keep talking about this after this joke here. So, um, here I did my first TikTok joke, I believe. That's all I've got. Like I don't think this scene was that funny, but this face palm scene can be a meme, and I thought it would be funny, but it's not funny in the scene. But I think I. I think I implemented it funny enough in my YouTube poop at least. So it's kind of making something more cringy in the movie. Um, cringy in the movie, uh, actually funny in a different context and stuff like that. All right, let me get to back to like the music part because I just did a TikTok song too. Uh, there's a lot of song references in my YouTube poop, and I'm kind of worried that I will get you know, I don't know, claimed because. I have only I only use about two or three seconds, at max six seconds, and I and I pitch shift it, I try to change it and stuff like that, but I still worry that I'm gonna get um, copyright claimed and all my revenue is gonna go. So yeah, that's a worry that I'm having, especially considering the whole U U S U C G U S G whatever whatever thing going on right now. Yeah, just a just a bit of a shower thought there for you guys. But we can't. Yeah, I'm free. You know the rules. You're not allowed to howl with her. She's an alpha. We can eat together, but we can't, you know, howl Mate! together. Mate, <laughs> yes, I know. I, uh, okay, I know. okay, that's enough. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we are gonna get introduced to Garth. Yes, yeah, buddy. Garth, He's in my opinion, us. is. Okay, I'm gonna go in depth about Garth's characteristic in this because, in my opinion, Garth is one of the things that makes this movie good. So, Garth, I depict him as a failed attempt at a bully. This movie tried to make Garth a self-arrogant bully rival of Humphrey for getting king. That was how they intended to make him. Like, you can obviously see it throughout this whole entire exchange. However, they failed. Look at that, look at that. Humphrey is trying to, they're trying to convey Humphrey as like the audience's part and stuff like, like that. Uh, Garth is like a stupid looking guy. <laughs> but the thing is, Garth hasn't done anything like wrong or bad or bully worth. And now Humphrey starts, you know, acting all, Hey, I'm a Prince Aline and I'm gonna be, you know, funny, funny time on him. But like, you know, looking back at this movie like six times already, it comes across as like Humphrey's being the bully here. Watch him. Who's the moose. Oh, hey, where are you hiding them antlers? Where are the antlers hiding, my friend? Oh my gosh. I had to listen to that like three times before I actually like felt... Whoa. <laughs> but either way, either way, Humphrey's a big, bit of an ass here. But um, yeah. Oh, and also I find this scene to be kind of funny. So now Lily takes Humphrey away. And then... The funny thing is the next scene, when we get to see Humphrey, Lily is gone. So it's like, w what happened? Like, you see Lily be like, so how is it going, Humphrey? You know, we Omegas have to stick together. Shut up, Clyde! <laughs> Come back when you're a main character. Like, I only want to bang your sister, Lily. Screw off! And you don't see Lily with her anymore, and I find it to be kind of funny. <laughs> okay. Poor Lily, which is also, by the way, Lily is also one of the best things about this movie, and I'll get to her later, because, you know, she really hasn't been in the movie yet, really. I just noticed that. It's been, it's been 20 minutes, and she really hasn't been in the movie yet. 
So now we get the scene where we see Garth, you know, suck at howling. Then I find this to be kind of funny. So, Kate doesn't want to hang out with Har Garth anymore and instantly wants to leave Garth because he sucks at howling, even though everything else works for him. Um, now, what I do find funny is that, uh, so, is the equivalent of howling for wolves like the equivalent of, like, um, I don't know, their cock size? <laughs> Oh, is that is that who I'm gonna be marrying for my life? Mm, uh, you know what? I just, yeah, it's not like I don't like your um size or anything like that. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go. Just, oh my gosh, I can't believe I said that. <laughs> Wait, I don't know. That's I just think that's kind of funny. And also, you know, the future of the pack, like to combine the Eastern Wolves with their pack, all ruined because of his cock size. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Okay, so, in this scene, uh, we get to see a funny interaction between, you know, a funny, quotation marks, interaction between Kate and Humphrey. And basically, as by funny, I mean Humphrey continues to bully Garth for no reason. Because Garth is supposed to be this uh, narcissistic uh, asshole that we must all hate, so it's great that Humphrey is making fun of him. Even though the only thing Garth has done is called Humphrey a coyote. Even though Humphrey has basically shoved his ass up his face, um, called him a moose, and now he's calling him a dud. <laughs> I don't know, Humphrey is an asshole in this movie. Humphrey is not funny, is an asshole, and and Kate is a tsundere. Yeah, and that's your main character, boys and ladies and gentlemen. Oh. This hamburger is so good. Mm. I feel like Peter B. Parker now. Mm. So glad I got this hamburger. Okay, um, we're gonna get to the trippy scene now, which in my opinion is, um, it's okay. It's not, actually, no, it's, it's not that good in my opinion, it's kind of weak. And I'm not saying they have to be, like, amazing, because the ones I can think of off the top of my head that are great, which, which I did a joke about here, is the, um, Bojack Horseman, Rick and Morty. Heck, I even think Madagascar had a good, like, uh, trippy scene, in my opinion. But yeah, I just don't think the trippy scene here is that amazing. Like, like, come on, even I know you can go more, give more sphere and swirl effects for that Humphrey face just then. Like, come on. Okay, uh, nothing really interesting happens now. So, it's time to go off topic again. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun. All right, so what are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Oh, yeah, did you expect to hear that in this in this audio commentary? Uh, yeah, yeah, you did. <laughs> so basically, I am not gonna like um, talk too much because I feel like when people talk about Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, they're gonna talk about you know what's negative about this. I'm not gonna talk about anything negative about this game. I'm just gonna compliment the shahash about. I'm gonna compliment the heck out of this movie. I mean, this game. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate has single player mode which you can play by yourself you can play in the story mode you can play in the classic mode has multiplayer which you can go play with your friends and make it an awesome party game you can have so much fun you can play um by the way uh, like last week my brother came over to my house to play super smash bros we played for four to five hours we played so many different modes and we and we basically tried as many characters as we, as we could and i'm pretty sure we still didn't go through half the roster and then there's online, which is in my opinion like always the fun mode when you're done with a single player. <laughs> online is always great. And then there's 74 characters and still more coming! 100 stages! Let me tell you something. I played Super Smash Bros. Brawl for 10 years and I still think that's my favorite game. Uh, until, you know, Ultimate. How long am I gonna be able to last playing with Super Smash Bros. Ultimate? Like. I've seen people joke and say the Wii is like a, a Super Smash Bros. arcade machine. I think that's what the Switch can be too, by the way. You can- I, that's the reason why I bought the Switch. No. Breath of the Wild? Nah. Nah. Ain't nothing. Ain't nothing. What's that? Odyssey? Ugh. You can- you can do that both in there. Oh, by the way, here's a piss joke for some reason. Th this movie has a couple of piss jokes. I don't know why. In my opinion, kind of disgusting. There's like kind of an adult joke. Ah, whatever. We'll cut it. We'll cut it. We'll cut it. Yee. Alright, so, um, let me talk about some of the characters in Smash Ultimate. In my opinion, I feel like, uh, the characters in Ultimate, by the way, are, um, I don't feel like anybody is 
bad. At least bad controllably speaking, or how they feel. Everybody I've tried just feels good. Feels nice to play with them and that's not It feels nice to play as them in the game. And I feel like that's kind of unexpected. Cause like there are characters I'll be like, I'm not too sure if I wanna try them, and I turn around and be like, wow, that's actually a lot better than I expected. I will get into that later, because uh, I think we're gonna get into we're gonna get into two new characters that I have to talk about, and I'm also running out of breath. <laughs> so I'm gonna take a small little drink and a break here. Jeez, how do Twitch streamers talk so so constantly? Okay, so here we have two new characters. The I believe it's a Canadian duck and a French goose. In my opinion, these two suck. They try to be like these classy, funny. Oh, okay, there's that one line I do think is funny, from, which is from the duck here. Um, could you do me a favor, Needles, and um, shut the hole that makes the words? I don't know why. I think that's kind of funny. But yeah, other than that, there's really nothing else that's funny about these two characters. They're obviously going for like a Timon Pumba combo kind of a thing. Like all these, all these like types of movies, cart like animations, they, they feel the need, they need like this comic relief that, that has to rival against like Timon and Pumbaa, and they really usually don't work. And in my opinion, the, the duck and the goose, they just, they just don't work. Uh, um, I'm tired, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a small break, because nothing really happens here anyways. <laughs> Until they start doing the duck chase, that's what, that's what I call it, the goose chase, sorry about that. I don't know, this is this the duck and the goose, they just don't do too many funny things in my opinion. Me, 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 me. Alright, we're gonna get into the duck chase scene now. This is oddly arousing. <laughs> you know, we wouldn't want to lie. <laughs> this is not a lie. This is not a lie if you are French. Uh, well, what, French what did that mean? What does being French mean if you're not lying? I, I don't know. These two just don't. All right, one thing I do find kind of funny about this scene is how the duck basically turned into sands. Okay, here there's the duck. The duck was behind the goose just then. All right. So now we're gonna get into a bunch of obstacles. And look, there he is. Teleportation duck, baby. This is the, this is the duck sands. Oh, oh, we're gonna get to the. Ooh, lovely. Mm. Kids movie. And right after that not show, we're gonna get into Ano. Can you believe that? A nut shot into an anal in a kid's movie. I find that to be crazy. Listen to the sound effect. They put a sound effect like that in the movie. Oh yeah, and it doesn't actually happen. <laughs> but like, I cannot believe that they would do that. That is, that is beyond me in my opinion. Not beyond me, whatever. But yeah, by the way, in my opinion in this movie, some, the, most of their sound effects suck. But that sound effect was great for what they were trying to do. <laughs> I'm gonna watch this. Teleportation Kate. <laughs> Teleportation Kate. Uh, you were uh, relocated to um, <laughs> repopulate. Oh, they said repopulate instead of mate, so it's okay. And look how much, look how horny Humphrey is. Look, look how much he just wants to bang Kate like 24/7. Sounds good to me. Sounds good to me. I'm totally fine banning K, you know, it's better for the greater good. <laughs> I just I just said I want to have sex with you, K. Are you okay with that? Mm -hmm. Humphrey is not funny, he's cringy, and he's also perverted. Great role model. Mm. What a lovely character. I don't know why I kind of like this, like that face. I just have to get hot. Is this about barf? It's garbage. Look at that, even in the dire situation, they he still has to make fun of um, Garth. Nothing really is happening, but the next scene. Ooh, the next scene is juicy, ju 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 juicy. So the both packs are, are like wondering why why the heck haven't they? Where the heck is Kate basically? And now the best scene happens right here. I just want to say one thing. If any of you wolves have hurt my daughter, I will personally rip out your eyes and shove them down your throat so you can see my claws tear your carcass open. Bravo. 
Bravo. That should be, that should be, that should have been just nominated for Oscar for kids movie. I love that. I love that so much. And now Lily finally becomes a character and is like, you know, can I hang out with Garth? Because I wouldn't say stood up. Garth. Sounds good to me. And uh, I'll, okay, I'm gonna get to Lily. I'm gonna talk about Lily's character a little more on the scene when they're finally together. But now, uh, nothing really happens again. Which means we can continue talking about Super Smash Bros. Ultimate! Oh, yeah! <laughs> so what do I wanna talk about the Ultimate? Okay, so I wanna talk about some characters that I thought were great. So I just said that, um, just then, I said that I feel like the characters in Ultimate aren't that bad. I mean, everybody doesn't, there's no character that in my opinion that I just feel like, oh, this character sucks, I can't believe they put this character in the game and stuff like that. Everybody in my opinion feels, feels smooth, feels nice, and feels fun. And even the characters that I'm not good with, I'll be like, okay, even though I don't really know how to play this character or don't feel as comfortable as using this character as other people, that's mainly because maybe I just need to put a little more time into that character and understand the character and I can like that character more. That's kind of how I felt with Wolf initially, but now I really like Wolf. Okay, so I'm going to talk about, in my opinion, some of the characters that I personally like. Um, um, okay, y'all know Fox Wolf Lucario, my base, especially Lucario, I made him now. Uh, <laughs> Falco, in my opinion, was uh, a bit of a surprise for me, because I did not like Falco in the Wii version, the Brawl, but Falco in this game feels nice. He feels a lot of fun. He feels he, He's a lot of fun, in my opinion. I love his spin moves, his nair, his forward air, his jab, anything he uses when he spins, it just feels very cool, in my opinion, and I really like that about Falco. All the Fire Emblem characters are pretty neat. <laughs> I I really enjoy playing the Fire Emblem characters, and I think that's kind of shocking. Uh, I'm trying to main Lucina because Lucina because I feel like if I can if I can learn Lucina, then I will get the fundamentals down for how to play. I'll get the fundamentals down for Smash if I know Lucina more because she's more of like one of the more basic sword characters in my opinion. So. Yeah, that's, that's one of the reasons why I want to play Lucina. And she's kind of fun. She's quite fun, in my opinion, too. All the Fire Emblem characters are quite fun, and, I, and I'm kind of shocked about that. Anyone unexpected? Uh, Cloud. I did not expect to like Cloud Strife. I don't even play Final Fantasy, but Cloud is quite fun, in my opinion. And I don't even know why. I just like Cloud. It, he feels nice. Anybody else? Uh... Uh... Shoot, I'm trying to think. I remember there's someone else. Who... Oh, Bowser! Yeah! I didn't expect to like Bowser as much as I did, but you know, I even said I even said before I'm not a heavyweight fan. But for some reason, if I don't know what to play, if I don't know what I what I want to do, I just pick a Bowser. And he's fun. I don't, I don't know why. Maybe it's because Force Smash does a lot of damage. But either way, uh, Bowser's a lot of fun. And as I stated from the beginning, uh, I don't really dislike any characters in the roster. Like, everyone I'm trying, I'm like either, okay, not for me, but you know, it still feels pretty good. Or, you know, I just feel like maybe I want to learn this character and give it a little bit more time. I like the Belmonts, I'm not good with them. Uh, Incineroar is fun, oh, the new characters are fun. I actually like Isabel. I, I just can't stop gushing about all the all the characters, because these they're pretty good. Oh bad, this scene, oh, bad, sorry. This scene just then, will ha it will copy paste, they copy paste the exact same scene, just change the coloring later on in the movie, and I'll tell you what, it's kind of funny. One character that I can't really get into for some reason is Yoshi, and I know you guys are gonna hate me for saying this, and and I know I even hate myself. This is why I'm gonna make it my priority to learn how to play Yoshi better because um, when I played Yoshi, I, I don't know if it's his jumps or some of his his aerial moves. They just don't feel very good for me. But you know, people say Yoshi's strong, and Yoshi is fast. I'll admit that. So I'm gonna get good with Yoshi, and that's my next character I want to get good at. Okay, let's get back to the movie, shall we? So now we get to see Lily and Garth hang out and have a general good time. Oh shoot, I have to talk about that joke. Or I'll get to the, I'll get to talk about Lily later on, but I want to talk about my thought process as this joke. So now Lily is gonna start imitating um, some a turtle basically, and for me in the YouTube poop, I didn't really think about much. Just basically, you know, I was looking at this scene and I thought about that and I just did it. So that's why you know the multiple legs, the idiot sandwich stuff. That was all thought about. The, okay. the the scene where she pretends she dies, like she's a, she's a dead turtle. I instantly thought about putting someone as like a dead YouTuber. Who would that be? I did not want to use Leafy as here because come on, shooting a dead horse making it even more deader. Is that a good thing? Is deader even a word? And I thought, you know, whatever. Yeah, sure, why not? Would my mother approve? 
That's a good line. That's a good line for my YouTube booth. Thank you for saying that, Lily. And a little sweet moment, but that's it. I noticed that watching this movie again, these moments don't last long. Okay, I'm gonna get a little bit into Lily's character. Lily is a shy but playful Omega. And um, basically, she finds Garth hot, and that's probably one of the reasons why she wanted to hang out with him. And Garth just wants to be nice, so he, he wants to hang out with her. And it seems like they both enjoy each other's companies, and that is a good, you know, start. That's a good, like, dynamic. And I like that. It's very simple. It's you don't really expect these two to be together, but they seem to be nice together. Okay, this scene is really funny in my opinion. So they find Kate's flower here, and then Winston's like, "Don't worry, she's the best alpha I've ever trained." And like now, both of them are like very calm to me. Like she's fine. I we absolutely don't need to worry about anything. But it's like, honey, are, is, are you supposed to feel better for looking at that? Shouldn't you feel more worried? Oh no, what if she's been taken away or something like that? But then they're both like, she's fine. It's like, it, for if I, it's like, let's pretend someone was missing. And then like they, and then people were trying to look for this person and they find an arm lying on the ground. And then like the, and then the people will be like, oh no, it's his arm. Don't worry. This is the best soldier I've ever trained. He'll be fine. You're right. And let's keep going. It's like, that's an arm, buddy. <laughs> oh, okay. This scene. So, I originally wanted to do something with this scene, but there wasn't that many funny things that happened. Uh, at least I did. I, maybe I could have done something, but in the end, I didn't. I think that's kind of funny, but it says that. And they also did something else that funny that happens here is basically he does the infamous Mufasa spin around meme. Oh, Humphrey does it. I'm glad I did put that on the YouTube poop too. But yeah, other than that, he does a piss joke again. Good job, good job, uh, Crest Studios. Piss jokes are very funny, very funny. Good job, good job. And nothing really else happens for a long time actually. So I'm gonna go into a very, very long off topic topic. Um, off-topic conversation. So I just thought about something. I'm probably probably most of my viewers are gone by this point, or maybe or maybe if you guys are listening to like a podcast, you know, hi, hey guys, uh, keep up the work, whatever you're doing. If you're drawing or uh, working or looking at porn, hope my hope my soothing voice will make you feel much better about the situation. <laughs> But yeah, either way, since we're in the middle of the video, since I'm pretty sure not a lot of people are gonna make it to this point of the video, I'm gonna say something that I'm gonna regret. Ooh, yeah, that's right, baby. That's right. Um, after all, not a lot of people are gonna see this scene, so, oh, hey, piss joke, haha. -ha. Uh, after all, not a lot of people are gonna see this scene, so it's like, I'm gonna say something that I'm probably gonna regret in the next couple of years, haha. -ha. I'm gonna say the N word. <laughs> Kubo sucks! <laughs> Why is that funny? It's not even that funny. Uh, okay, look, I apologize. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, okay. Kubo doesn't suck, okay? It's just overrated! <laughs> oh no! Oh no, why is that fun? It's not funny! It's not that funny. What the heck is wrong with me? Okay, I, I know I pissed off some minority of fans out there. Alright, 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 alright. Now, uh, okay, I should kind of explain myself here about Kubo. You know what? I actually kind of leads to my next topic that I can talk about here. 2016 movies. Is that a weird topic? It is kind of weird. In my opinion, I find 2016, the year 2016, to be a pretty damn good year for animations. And <laughs> I can, I, maybe I could even make a video about this. Uh, I guess I kind of I kind of got inspired by uh, Schaeferick's uh, 2009 is the best year for animated movie year. Oh, by the way, Schaeferick, um, congratulations, congratulations on 100k, good job, and also, you coward, I'm coming, I'm just 15,000 subscribers behind you, and I'm coming, intellectual dumbass, I know that I want to put you in the nose, and I'm coming. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking. I don't even care about catching up to you, Schaeferx. Love you. You are you are a great YouTube pooper, and uh and uh best of luck. <laughs> I love you, and I'm just joking. And I'm coming. Oh my gosh. I do want 100k though, so that's hopefully we can get that next year. Um. Mm. Back to the topic at hand. So, 2016 movies, animated movies, in my opinion, were. 
pretty damn good. In 2016, we've got um, Finding Dory, Your Name, Rock Dog, Trolls, Kung Fu Panda 3. Like these, in my opinion, are some pretty good movies in general. Now, for the phenomenal, for like the amazing, the most best movies that came out during 2016. So we have Zootopia, no shit. And um, I like Storks. I thought this movie was so funny. I'm, I might like Storks a little too much, more than how like people people give it, but I really liked this movie. I really liked it. I thought it had some heart, but most importantly, it was really funny, and I just really liked that movie. And then we got, you know, Moana and Kubo, which, in my opinion, both movies, um, well, yeah, they're good. They're great. They're great. They're phenomenal movies, but I do have my problems with <laughs> Uh, both of them, by the way. Oh, yeah, uh, I shouldn't really keep on pissing off Schaefer X, but, like, you know, I have problems with Moana. <laughs> but I, okay, Moana, in my opinion, is a good movie. I even, I think it has a really great start, too. But my problem with Moana is that, um, in the movie, not trying to spoil anything, but there are so many same Disney tropes from, like, um, previous previous Disney movies, and I mean recent too, from, from like the first record, Ralph, Big Hero 6, Frozen, Tangled, Zootopia, like so many things, they do the same exact same thing that they do in Moana, except for, and not spoiler alert, if, unless you haven't seen Moana, no twist ending villain, which I mean, I, mean if, I guess if you want to say the twist ending is the beginning goddess lady who was the villain, then fine, but you know, at least there's not really a big twist ending villain. And then Kubo, um, okay, Kubo's a great movie. Kubo is so beautiful. Kubo is so good looking. Kubo is great, but I freaking hate the third act. And again, I can go more in depth into this, but maybe another time, but I just want to state, in my opinion, the, from the moment, from the, from the final battle to also the, the battle, but before the final battle is where, in my opinion, the movie just, <laughs> So yeah, but either way, I, feel, I still think these are great movies. I just think Kubo is overrated. That, that's all I'm trying to point. I'm not saying it sucks, okay? I just think that part sucks, but yeah. And, oh, also, uh, even though we got winners, but we do have some losers. We have two Illumination films, uh, Sing and Pets. I literally felt like part of me was, like, gone after watching those two. Yeah, thank, thank you, Illuminations. Ice Age 5, uh, thank you. And now we have two movies that I think people, I don't know if they'll agree or not. But we got Angry Birds. So Angry Birds, I believe people think it's, you know, it's a corporate company movie. And, you know, it's for kids. It's, it's really, ugh. But in my opinion, it's not too bad. My experience watching Angry Birds, by the way, was I watched it in Chinese in the theater. I hated the fact that we couldn't listen to English voice acting. But even after watching it in Chinese, I was like, you know, it's good. I still thought it was okay. I still thought it was nice. Which, by the way, is a video game movie. Ha ha ha. But anyway, that's my opinion. I don't think Angry Birds is that bad. And Sausage Party, I thought Sausage Party would suck. But in my opinion, it turned out to be uh, not too bad, actually. And, uh, yeah, there we go. That's my opinion about why I like about 2016 movies. 2016 animated movies. All right, we're back to Garth and Lily. The best part about this friggin' movie. <laughs> So now we get to see uh, Garth show off, showing off his skills in front of Lily. I'm sorry for thinking about that Fortnite, Fortnite joke, by the way. Oh yeah, Fortnite! Ah, uh, crap. I'll get into Fortnite probably the next next scenes. Ah, uh, this, this is so sweet! They're so cute! Ah! Uh! Okay. Shut up, I'm watching the most cutest of the uh, couple. There's something I want to kind of imply, by the way, in this whole thing. Garth and Lily aren't hanging out because Humphrey wants to bang, bang Kate, and Kate's being a tsundere to Humphrey. Shut up! Garth and, hum and Kate and Lily just want to hang out because they just want to hang out. They just want to be friends. And slowly but surely, their bond grows. And in my opinion, that is way better than what we're getting from Humphrey and Kate. And that is why people really like 
these two in the movie, and they think this is one of the best parts as to why, you know, it's worth even watching this movie in the first place. Which, by the way, all of these scenes with Lily and Garth probably don't even last five minutes in this whole damn movie. Yeah. Alright, now we're gonna get into the, uh, the snowball fight. No, not the snowball fight, the bears. Um, so, we're gonna see the cub, the little bear kid, which, by the way, is kind of creepy now that I think about it, the way how he starts off. You'll see what I mean. And uh, this is where, by the way, I said that I learned Cinema 4D for. You see the 3D fonts, and I literally just say, Cub is dead, this is so sad, like and subscribe. That thing took me about three to four hours to learn and make, when I, and I made it at work. So I think that's pretty awesome that I, that I learned that and did that. So that's pretty cool. And I rip, rip. Show up, cub. Show up, you little cub. You little. Hey there. Wow. What are you? Well, I'm a wolf. I don't know. That, that that's kind of creepy, for my opinion. Oh yeah. By the way, uh, apologies for uh, people people who got like offended for me for like killing this little bear like two times in the YouTube poop. <laughs> Oh yeah, check this out. So Kate's like, ah ha ha, he's having fun with the cub there. Oh, it's not adorable. Ah ha ha ha. And then like, oh, except you know, there's consequences because you know, Mama Bear shows up. Well, by the way, what I do find kind of funny is like, um, I didn't watch all seven sequels of Alpha and Omega, but from what I recall, um, like later on in the stages, like the wolves and the bears are like in a friendly like friendly situation so I do find that to be kind of funny that okay so bears are super feral in this movie but not in the other ones though oh by the way what's popping oh yes oh I love this part of the YouTube poop too I love what I did here I brought back what's popping and it's Chad Daily we oh, I forgot I forgot what he said it's Chad here and then we got it is Wednesday my dude um, basically just got a bunch of people who are super high, in my opinion, and then, you know, I'll put them all on the bears, and I absolutely love it. I absolutely love what I did here. Um, anything else that happens here? Okay, we're in trouble. Oh yeah, Humphrey tells her what dumb joke. Good. So, okay, so two bears are uh, eating a clown, and, and one of the bears says, does this taste funny to you? One funny thing that I do find is that they just basically left their cub there back there too. So now nobody's gonna go protect the little bear. And uh, what you call it? Um, maybe another pack of wolves are gonna go grab them or something like that. I don't know. Ah! <laughs> oh, that's right. Okay, so in this scene, Humphrey becomes incredibly unfunny. Is that even a word? Unfunny? I don't know. Unfunny and cringy. This, 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 basically this whole entire scene before they fall off the mountain. Ooh. <laughs> you! I didn't even notice he pointed there. Stuff between the cliffs and the claws. Is that an actual saying? What's your name? Oh yeah, try to be funny, Humphrey. Oh, you're so funny, Humphrey. Mm. You need a hug. Look at that! That is so funny! Why do we talk? Can we just talk? Yeah, why don't they talk? Oh, good job, Bear. You got you killed yourself, too. <laughs> oh, by the way, um... They can talk. The bears and the wolves can talk later on in the movie series. But they're just super wild and feral here. Okay, now we get to the third log ride scene. So this one, um... Back seven years ago, I didn't really know what to plan to do here. But thanks... Thanks for the fact that I bought a Switch, and I bought Mario Kart 8, I learned about a stage called Mount Wario, which was super friggin' awesome, and it's just basically you riding the car down a snowy mountain, and that's why I just played Mount Wario's theme in this scene. And I think it's and I think it's pretty good. I think it's pretty good. And then later on, when the bear catches up to them, I just play uh, the Crash Bandicoot uh, 2 polar bear chase scene theme, which I think fits really well. And I think it's pretty good, pretty good. Uh, that right here, I play the Crash Bandicoot 2 theme song. So here, they're like, what are you looking at? 
And originally, I was gonna use the uh, the VeggieTales, the toy that says Christmas joke, where the road ends because uh, Mr. Nesley was about to like uh, send them off a cliff. I was gonna use that, but the clip, the cliff, uh, the clip doesn't really cut well in my opinion. So in the end, I didn't. And then I end up using Vor, which by the way is absolutely family friendly. You can find a bunch of them on YouTube. Awesome. <laughs> So I, did, so I decided to use that. Okay, so let me do a short summary here. I'm just gonna say, this howling scene is great. It's awesome and it's nice. I know. And I'm gonna use this opportunity to talk about why in my opinion, Garth and Lily are way better than Kay and Humphrey. So, as I stated, Humphrey wants to bang Kay. That's the biggest That's the biggest reason why Humphrey wants to go on Kay. And Kay's like, I don't like you, but I do like you. Like, it's in theory. I've said that many times in this video. Whereas, Lily and Garth, they're just, they just want to hang out because they actually like each other's companies. And that is, in my opinion, the biggest driving point about this whole entire damn movie. Because the movie is, is, is listed as Alpha and Omega. The Alpha and the Omega are not supposed to be together. That's pack law. However, well, Kate and, let you God, Lily and Garth, they know this but they slowly and gradually like each other regardless. And like Humphrey knows this. These two, they don't care. Like Garth and Lily, they just like each other because they like each other. But Garth, but Humphrey's like, I want to chase her. Kate's like, I am a tsundere. I sound like I'm a really chaser, sorry about that. Now, I'm gonna put a very, very, very extreme example as to um, why I think Garth and Lily, Garth and Lily are way better as a couple. That's changed oh, nothing about this movie, okay? Changed nothing about Garth and Lily and Humphrey and Kay, okay? Except one thing. Alright, hear me out. They're the same sex. Okay, now think about that. Think about everything that happens in this movie. Everything. And now you will understand why Garth and Lily work way better. Like, for example, let's just pretend. Pretend maybe both these characters are same sex, then wouldn't that just like appeal way more as to why it's forbidden? But then it's like, you know, love comes from a different place, kind of a, kind of like a storyline or something like that. Whereas Humphrey and Kate, it's just, haha, we're on an adventure, and I still want to bang Kate, bagala, I don't like you. <laughs> I feel like the message of this movie works way more and way better for Garth and Lily, and their scenes only take up five minutes of this movie and that is one of the biggest in my opinion failures as to what this movie didn't try to do okay and that and that basically ramp, wraps up my rant about the garth dilly humphrey k situation but by the way um can you feel the love tonight <laughs> Oh, and by the way, uh, I sure am looking forward to that scene in the live-action remake of The Lion King. It's either gonna come off as extremely cringely or oddly arousing. <laughs> and then and the news media is gonna be like, Lion King promotes uh, bestiality. <laughs> I need to stop. I still have a hamburger to eat. I've been talking too much. I'm gonna eat this damn hamburger. Hmm. Okay. Nothing really happens here, so I'm just gonna keep eating my hamburger until something happens. Ah. No, Alright, no. so. Please. It's time to go off topic again. Oh. I remember I promised Fortnite, Fortnite. in my YouTube poop. <laughs> so let's talk about Fortnite. Oh my gosh. Now, I'm gonna. I'm gonna tell you my um, perspective about how I about Fortnite because like even even a year ago even like like the past eight or nine months I was like Fortnite is the most disgustingly famous game in the world and like um what do you call it I don't get why people keep playing this game people keep saying people keep watch this game on Twitch it's so popular and I was kind of outside of that situation about Fortnite too I don't know the jokes about Fortnite I don't know what the heck is going on with Fortnite you could say it's because of curiosity you could say it's also because my friend uh, friends wanted me to play this. It's not definitely because of the Halloween event where you get that um, that one skin that looks very cool, very nice. Definitely not because of that. That's the reason why I play Fortnite. Absolutely not. So I'm gonna give my opinion about Fortnite. All right, all right. Ready to hear this? By the way, Fortnite 
is a good game. Well, that's up for debate. And I still don't understand why a bunch of kids play it. So why not be like that? I just complimented the game, and now I not complimenting the game. Let me first say a couple of things that I like about the game. The game works fine. The game has, I know it's a meme, but I love the cosmetics you can get in the game. The, whether it be your skins, whether it be dance emotes, whether it be whatever. I like that. I like the game where you can customize yourself a lot for fun. Um, now, I'm gonna I'm gonna nail down a real, real hard like uh, topic. Uh, what, did I do? what does that mean? I'm gonna say something that's um, that I really don't understand. Why do so many kids play Fortnite? I couldn't understand if regular people, regular teenagers or adults want to play Fortnite, that's fine. But why why the heck do kids want to play Fortnite? And what do I mean by this? Because, I'm, because you know, Fortnite seems like a real family-friendly game. Yes, but let me tell you one issue. Okay, I'll continue Fortnite later after this scene. So now, we are getting into the battle scene. I absolutely, I absolutely love the part where I put in the, we each need to take down about 10. I love that meme. I love that meme. And um, yeah, so basically they're gonna have this fight, um, which, by the way, the ge geometry with this whole entire scene is very hilarious, and I'll tell you why later on. But you gotta notice the background mountain. Oh yeah, I love the everyone. We have an announcement to make. Everyone, I love that joke. I, I, I just do for some reason. I'm gonna keep talking about Fortnite. Fortnite. Oh my gosh, that sounded so great. <laughs> okay, so what I mean by saying I don't understand why kids play this game is it's so freaking hard. And okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna use PUBG as a comparison here. So PUBG is uh, a game where you basically fight against a hundred different people. You loot, you kill, you run into the circle, you survive. Over end of the conversation. Fortnite the same, except you can build. Oh, sorry. Let me get back to the movie. I'm so sorry. I keep switching back and forth. I really don't understand what's going on. What's going on, with Humphrey here? So basically, throughout the whole entire movie, Humphrey wants to bang Kate. I'm just gonna put it out there. Humphrey is super horny, but for some reason now Humphrey's like, mm, I, I don't really know how to tell you this, but I actually like you. Oh, I'm so shy now. <laughs> it's really funny. I don't know why. And throughout the whole entire movie, before he confesses his love to Kate. He's gonna act super shy now. All right, I'll get back to my Fortnite conversation after this scene because something funny kind of happens here. Okay, look at this, look at this, look at this right now. Look at the geometry, look at the mountain. Okay, you see that? This is the mountain over here, right there. They're all fighting up on the hill, right? Yet, look at that, okay. There's this cliffside. You see, it's a cliffside, okay? Now, oh, by the way, the wolves on the, on the right should already be seeing Kay. Like, oh my gosh, she's back, but nobody talks. And now, look at where Kate shows up. On a freaking top of the mountain! Wasn't it a cliff? And weren't there supposed to be wolves on the left and right side? I find that to be kind of funny. Oh yeah, by the way, I do a Super Smash Bros. joke here, and I like it. Uh, making the making Xander, <laughs> the announcer, say, Kate! I think that's really funny. And, you know, I'm glad I did that. I was considering doing a Mega Man joke from the, you know, when he gets revealed and stuff like that. Oh, here comes the fourth bomb. Here comes the best scene from Eve again. Best girl Eve. We were supposed to repopulate. Uh, it's okay, he didn't say mate. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Kill this useless protagonist. Absolute degenerate. <laughs> okay, that's it. Nothing really else funny happens with it. Oh, by the way, uh, every single joke I do in the YouTube boob with Eve, I love it. I absolutely love what I do with her. Make her more and more psycho. I think it's great. All right, back to Fortnite. Fortnite. Oh my gosh, I want to get over with this. In Fortnite, you can build. And... Okay, that's kind of like adding a Minecraft element into the game, but like, in my opinion, if you want to get good at this game, if you want to even have a chance at surviving to the top 10, I mean, you, you, actually, surviving to the top 10 is hard, just don't, just don't, um, participate in any battles, but like, building is so hard! Like, and I don't understand how kids can play this game! So many! And that kind of hits me for the fact that, um, what'd you call it? Oh, poor card. Poor Lily. And that kind of hits me for the fact that nobody builds. None of the nine-year-olds, probably none of the kids who play this game will ever build it, except slightly. But like all the good people who play this game, they are the only ones who can know how to build. Unless, correct me if I'm wrong, correct me if a little child knows how to do ninja skill buildings to be able to get to get that victory royale. Because getting the victory royale requires you, require you to learn that stupid freaking building skills and it is so damn hard in my opinion 
Now, I'm not saying I'm bad at the- I'm not saying, Oh my gosh, you're so bad at the game, oh my gosh. Yeah, I'm bad at the game. But you wanna know why? Because I didn't learn building. And I felt like I could have learned building. However, you know what I decided to do? I decided to play Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. And that's why I didn't learn how to build. Which I still think is crazy for how... How popular it is, because... Building, in my opinion, just makes this game super ridiculously hard. That doesn't mean the game is bad. But what I do, what in my opinion means is like, why do kids play this game? And that is the end of my conversation about Fortnite. Oh, by the way, I also played Fortnite as a way to cope myself with playing, the you know, waiting for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. So, you know, there's that. <laughs> All right, nothing really happens here until, um, until they get married, until, until the marriage scene, marriage scene. Ah, uh, I'm so tired, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, I still haven't finished my cheeseburger yet. Hey, the two most unfunny characters. By the way, off topic, not really, but uh, my favorite character, my favorite characters are Garth, Lily, and Eve. They're the only characters in this movie that I feel like aren't generically um, playing. However, there's gonna be a scene with Tony because Tony has been a real asshole in, throughout this whole entire movie, but there is one scene with Tony where I'm like, um, I like. I forgot to mention this, by the way, but when people first see this movie, and I'm pretty sure everybody has the same initial idea, Humphrey looks so f***ing disgusting. <laughs> I mean, he doesn't look that good, at least his model, and he, does, he just doesn't look that good. However, um, as time passes on, as I look at him for like another, I don't know, 60 times, I start to get used to him, and I start to be like, okay, sure, whatever. I don't know, I don't know really why. But like, I call it the Humphrey effect, where like, these characters, they don't initially look that good, but as I, as I give them more time, and I keep looking at this character, I'm like, yeah, you know what, they're not that bad either. In fact, maybe some of the characters, I would even say, I like the, their design now. It's kind of interesting, I don't know why that happens. All right, are we getting ready to see the marriage scene? Ooh! Now, it's a very small detail here about Tony. This character, who really isn't likable, but there's one thing out of all this movie, out of all the things that are horrible and bad and uh, mediocre in this movie that I like about Tony, and it's right here. Oh, no, not here, right here. Here's really sassy with Lily. It's right here. Right, ready? Look at Tony, ready? Right here, right here. Right here, right here. Tony, he's gonna do it right now. I love that. And I don't know if that's just me, but it's very, very minor. But in my opinion, that just makes Tony's character way better. And it's really weird. So basically, what did Tony do there? He basically just do his hands motions like that. And um, what that symbolizes is like, you could say, it'd be like, hurry up and get married so we can re you re in the pack. But to me, it symbolizes like he's proud of his son. Like, oh my gosh, he's finally gonna get married. I'm so proud of him. Now, don't be shy and just hurry up and take the action. Just hurry up and do it. That's kind of the implication that I got from that scene, in my opinion. Now, in their uh, in their movie universe. Oh, by the way, he's gonna say it. To symbolize that they are. He's gonna say it. He's gonna say it. He said the M word. Oh my gosh. Congratulations. <laughs> Okay, let me kind of explain something here that I actually do find kind of cute in their movie world because, you know, if they want to kiss, they can't actually kiss because they're dogs or canines. And, you know, a lot of movies, they try to do kissing scenes and stuff like that. And, you know, everyone has their different versions of it. Crest Animations, what they do to symbolize for kissing in this movie is touching noses. Or rubbing noses, I guess. And I find that to be actually kind of cute. I think that's a, that's a really cute thing for... Um, for them to do in this uh, movie. However, I uh, googled some wolf facts, by the way, and I looked up, do wolves actually touch noses? And, you know, boop noses. And as it turns out, they actually do. However, their meaning isn't I love you. And their meaning is two. One is just basically saying they're greeting each other. So they're saying hi to each other. And that's why they boop noses. Ugh, Humphrey doesn't jump onto the train, oh my gosh. So yeah, they boop noses as to say hi, and the other way is they boop noses to symbolize that one is beneath the other. Basically kind of saying like, um, the other wolf is licking the other wolf's feet. 
Like I'm licking your feet. That that symbolizes me touching noses. That's that's what it means. Um Anything else? Yeah, I actually was supposed to put out a bunch of more wolf facts in this movie because there's a lot of funny wolf, pa wolf facts that are wrong. Such as, this whole movie is basically Alpha and Omegas, when there should be only be like one or two Alpha and like only one Omega or two Omegas in a pack. So I think that's kind of funny. Can't escape from crossing fate! Sight! Oh yeah, this is the scene that I said was copy-pasted back in that scene. It's literally the exact same. And wouldn't you know it, what's the finale of this movie? We already did a stampeding Lion King ripoff scene in the beginning. How do we end off our movie? I just watched Lion King again that night, so uh, you know, I you know, uh, let's do it again. Look at Winston's mouth. <laughs> I don't know why that that angle or that animation just looks kind of funny. Okay, now start writing to the side, please. They had a lot of time to start writing to the side, but no. And now they're getting like surrounded. So, oh, they can't run from the side. <laughs> I still think the Prometheus joke works here. Prometheus score running. Humphrey, you came back. Oh my gosh, I'm so happy. Now I'm gonna get to the final part of the of this freaking log log sliding thing. Like, ugh, this is the fourth time. Now, originally, seven years ago, by the way, I was gonna do a Rainbow Road song because it's the final final track and it's the final. Th Final like road they're gonna do. So I wanted to do a, uh, I wanted to use the Rainbow Road theme. However, it doesn't really make sense. Uh, I guess you could you could use the Rainbow Road's uh, color scheme to make it like blue, red, green, like really rainbowy. But in the end, I decided because I played Mario Kart 8, I decided to use Big Blue. Not only because the saxophone is so friggin' hot and awesome, but because there was the joke with the the saxophone still going. And it's, this is this goes for all for a while actually, and then they're not they're still flying they're still flying and now they drop, and I think that was kind of funny in my YouTube poop and I'm glad I did that. Also, uh, if you see the if you see the end credit scene, that scene is where everybody starts flying out with their funny like motions. Let's play play. I like that. I really like how I did that. I like a lot of the things that I cut here. Oh, and I absolutely love how easily Kate dies here, <laughs> just like that, a slap. And then she's dead. Bye bye, K. Bye bye, K. Bye bye. Bye bye. You won't be missed. <laughs> so, if not only did they have the audacity to rip off the stampeding scenes and whatnot in this movie, they had the audacity to steal Mufasa's death scene. I, I, I probably have a lot of. I, probably a lot of the English stuff I said in this has been wrong, and I apologize in advance. I'm Asian, uh, Asian man. Sorry, Tom uh, Na That's not even Chinese. Sorry, I can't. I gotta stop. Okay, but basically, um, you know, oh, so sad. She's dead. She's dead now. Uh, if she actually died, that would actually, in my opinion, make maybe an interesting like plot for like later on in the movies. But no. Now they all howl to I don't know revive her, and basically in the YouTube poop, I uh. This is my YouTube of climax. I wanted to like make everyone's trait reveal. Rev I wanted to review everyone's trait basically in the movie. So Lily does the wow thing. Uh, Eve does uh, Mr. Bubs. There are no side characters. Winston does Winston. I was gonna do something with Tony, but in the end I didn't because I found which is kind of interesting because see Garth and Humphrey's friends they don't show up here, and I put them in the YouTube poop. Because, you know, I think they're, they were a part of the YouTube group, they were a part of the story, and I felt like we should have at least seen them howling too, but we don't. And I think that's kind of weird. But I add that, add that in there anyways. And also, you have been revived, bitch! Hey, how you doing? Let me post your face right here. I'm actually about to lose my voice. Oh, and also the final best scene of Eve. Which, by the way, I absolutely love the joke that I did with uh, Spyro here. You got a problem with that pussy? I love that. I absolutely love that. And also, these two kiss. It's adorable. Ah, oh, it's so cute. And uh, I'm actually kind of afraid my video will get, my YouTube will get age restricted because of that seed in the video. So yeah, I, uh, I'm a little afraid of that. <laughs> but I hope I didn't take it too far. Like I don't know. Like my my Overwatch YouTube poop, which had absolutely no imagery whatsoever, got age restricted because apparently. Widowmaker, Widowmaker stepping on her foot, like kicking the table, got me age restricted. Yeah, YouTube's weird. 
And ladies and gentlemen, that is the final howl, which, oh yeah, I, I do some howling songs here. I apologize for another Megalomania Sans joke here. I did, I did a couple. And then, um, in the end, uh, what you call it? Humphrey and Kate will howl to the moon with the Metal Gear Solid. Oh! You two are the best. Mwah. There's a reason why people petition to wish for a Garth and Lily solo movie. Which, in my opinion, they should just not do. Because Crest Animations is basically gonna ruin everything that they could do in the future from this point on. Which, by the way, I think it's kind of a blessing that they don't have kids. And Humphrey and, and, and uh, Kate have, like, three. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the end of Alpha and Omega. Just kidding, there's seven more sequels! Oh my gosh. And the kids never even grow up. Oh my gosh. And I've never seen the sequels, by the way. But that is the end of our video. Unless you guys forgot what I said at the end of my YouTube poop. That's right. I said, the concept art looks better than the friggin' movie. Now, to show you guys what I mean, here are some of the- you can go on YouTube and look up uh, Alpha and Omega's behind the scenes, and you can look at the concept arts. They look really good, in my opinion. They look very, very cool. They're very, very uniquely designed. They look- they just look great, in my opinion. And uh, I looked in the behind the scenes, and they said they got 60 different versions- So we have maybe 60 different looks and styles to pick from. Look at how Humphrey looks. They tried to give him long hair, right, in the movie. It looks disgusting. But just then, that was drawn very cool. Very well done, in my opinion. I think that's really well drawn. And this is Humphrey when he first started out. Here's another version of him. And like, uh, I remember Winston and even Tony look way more badass and way more like, like old and like good in the concept art, and I think that's great. But, um, okay, so this is what I think. I'm not 100% certain on this. You can say this is kind of a theory. But basically, the cool hand-drawn animation cartoonish style, unique characteristics they tried to give in 2D, like uh, the artists, all of that, when they transferred it into 3D, was much more different and maybe even difficult. Sometimes the 2D doesn't really work in 3D, so we would have to, you know, create it differently in 3D and try to interpret it a different way while maintaining the integrity, the look, and the feel of the character. Like, I believe seeing like Winston or Tony, like their whole body type was supposed to be a lot more big, but in the movie they're just slightly bigger. I remember them saying that the Omegas and Alphas, like the Omegas are gonna be way more skinny and the Alphas are gonna be way more strong and big, only slightly in the movie. But in the concept art, in the 2D art, art I think, yeah, you can see it. You can see a lot more heart and love put into the concept or the 2D stuff in this movie. And uh, they also stated that um, the hair animation, because a lot of these wolves, they have freaking hair, which by the way, I just, I don't really like the fact that you give wolves hair. Uh, I mean, or any, any anthropomorphic or whatever animal animations hair. Like, rarely does it look good in my opinion. These wolves, eh. But I get, but then they said like, they use their animations automatic system to create hair. And that, in my opinion, is one of the reasons as to why the movie doesn't look as good as the concept art. Because the hair was automatically, like, created through 3D engines to automatically produce the hair. The program is called Shave and Haircut. It actually grows fur right on our model. And the fur, you can grow it long, you can take a comb, you can cut it. You can do all of these things to make it look just like the way you want it to. Again, I just really think that the concept art of this movie looks really good actually and I would actually really rather see this movie be made in 2D if that was the original concept art. I mean it looks a little like Balto, a little Disney, but a lot better than what turned out the 3D stuff in this movie. A lot better in my opinion. And yeah, I uh, guess that's it ladies and gentlemen. That is all I have to say. I'm, I'm, okay, even with all the stuff that I said in this movie, I guarantee you, I missed out a bunch. I was originally planning on making a bunch of more wolf facts jokes about funny facts that happened in this movie. 
with wolves and stuff like that. And um, I guess there's a lot more stuff about the YouTube poop that I didn't talk about. And I apologize about that because I guess I got to into Fortnite. Fortnite. <laughs> All right, I'm not. Gonna, I'm gonna stop this as soon as possible because I feel like I'm gonna lose my voice. I'm not gonna be able to like talk for the next uh, couple of days. Yay! Ah. Guys, thank you all so much for watching. If you actually made it to the end of this video, <laughs> I'm, I would be very happy. Uh, I, I know. I know. Like only about one percent of my viewers would probably like, actually make it to this point and, and thank you thank you so much i i'm really sorry i'm pretty sure listening to me like talk like this was very really cringy in fact like uh i wanted to like maybe like talk to somebody else while i was talking about this movie because watch the movie together that would definitely be better but then i wouldn't be able to like express my own opinions and stuff that i um did in the youtube poop because that's one of the things i wanted to do for this video at least because there's a lot of stuff that I cut out of the YouTube poop There's a lot more opinions I have about this mo movie that I didn't put into the YouTube poop and the YouTube poop is already 13 minutes And I think it's already really great <sighs> Wow, what a year I uh, Took almost Three four maybe even half a year to making this video and I'm uh, not this video the YouTube poop and it's finally over Every single time I make a big project. I always like dedicate myself so into the whole thing uh, Marvel vs. Capcom. I looked at that. I looked at the cutscenes of that so many times. Injustice, Monsters University, Zootopia. So getting into uh, Alpha and Omega is really interesting because this is the best movie that Crest movie has made, I think at least. And and from this point on, it just goes downhill. It just goes with that polar bear freaking twerking seven sequels Alpha and Omega. Holy shenanigans! And in my opinion. This movie, while it is mediocre, it definitely had effort. There is like, there is some love and effort and you know, try, they, they tried. I really do feel like that they tried to do something good. Later on, straight to DVD. Everything just straight to DVD. No one gives a damn. But make the, make the freaking pups the most ugliest damn thing in the world. And for that, I commend them. I feel like Alpha and Omega will be remembered because of Garth and Lily, most, the most definitely. And uh... Just remember it for Garth and Lily. That's really all I can say about this movie. And maybe for Eve. Definitely for Eve, for sure. But even then, I'm pretty sure Eve's like characteristic like is drops down in the sequels. I haven't seen any of the sequels. I've only seen uh, Bob Shuck's videos about them. And they're great. My, a, lot of the, a lot of the jokes and probably a lot of the things I said in this were already said by Bob Shuck. So I apologize in advance for, for, uh, for maybe taking some of his jokes. <laughs> but yeah. I'm gonna end it. I feel like I've been talking too much and I feel like at this point, um, you know, the people are slowly leaving the theater and stuff like that. This has been a really, really magical journey for me. And uh, I don't know where I'm going next. I don't know what I'm making next. But all I know is that I'm gonna keep on entertaining you guys. Cause that's fun and I really love it. It's my passion. Thank you all so much for watching. And I'll see you all. Oh, is it? I don't know if I'll upload this on New Year's, but I guess happy freaking New Year, everybody. And I'll see you guys another time. Love y'all. Bye-bye.